Alright guys, Cobb here, coming at you with a Pulsemon deck profile. Guys, it's going to the damn moon. I've been banging the Pulsemon drum for a long time and people be saying, Cobb, it's not good, what does it even do? Well, I'll tell you what it does. It's a fantastic deck, nobody's playing it, nobody in Japan played it, but somehow, it might just be competitively viable. In fact, it is. It's basically a theme deck, guys. It's playing all the Pulsemon cards that you would expect it to be. You've got your damn Pulsemon, you've got your damn Kazuchimon, and you've got perhaps one of the most cracked cards in the whole deck, Promo Boutmon. Guys, it's going to be a fun one, and it's going to be something that you didn't expect. So strap yourselves in, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Right gang, prepare yourself because we're going to get into the nitty gritty of Pulsemon here. Now this deck, nobody knows what it does, this is what I was saying earlier. People don't know what it does, people like Pulsemon and they want to play it, a lot of people are telling me they're going to try and build a Pulsemon deck, but I've had people come to me and say, oh Cobb, don't know what it does, couldn't make it work, it's too, it's, it's not consistent enough. Well, let me tell you, this list is super consistent. Um, is about as consistent as any OTK list could be really, um, has its ups and its downs. So let's get into the profile and let's talk a little bit about what the deck actually does. So the main crux of the deck is an OTK, right? It's an OTK from four security um, and you're going to be swinging with your Kazuchimon to get the game cut out early. So Kazuchimon, what does he do? You probably know what he does already. He's, he's been kicking about the format for a while in other decks, but this is the Pulsemon deck. This showcases Kazuchimon to his full potential. So basically, when you digivolve, if you're at three or more security, you gain two memory. And if you're at three or less security, you will recover security till you're at three, okay? This is very powerful because if you're at a low amount of security, and um, they can't quite finish you off. Gaining three security is absolutely bonkers. Um, now his other effect, and this is how you enable the OTK, is when you're at exactly three or more security, you gain security attack plus one. Okay, so Kazuchimon's going to be a double breaker. Now you use this in tandem with the promo Boutmon card, um, which has the effect when this Digimon would Digivolve into a Shaman or Wizard, you may trash up to three security cards and you can reduce the cost by one for each trashed. So that's going to reduce the cost of Kazuchimon by up to three. So you could potentially do it for two memory. If you're at five security and you trash two, you're going to make him three to go into and then he's going to gain you back two. So if you're at five security and you go into Kazuchimon, that costs you one memory baby, let's go. It's huge. Um, and then you can also use it when you're at three or less you know, hopefully you're not at one or he's still going to be costing you a pretty penny. But yeah, so this is how we enable it and this is, the deck's all about being at exactly three security to get huge value, get huge swings with Kazuchimon and Boutmon's effect, uh, inherited effect is absolutely nuts. So the inherited of Boutmon is when attacking once per turn if you have three security cards exactly unsuspend this Digimon. So you can probably see where this is going, we're going to use Boutmon Say we're at 5 security, we trash 2 security to go into Kazuchimon for 3, then we gain back 2 memory. So you can do that on 1 memory everyone. What we're going to then do, swing with Kazuchimon for 2 checks, we stand Kazuchimon and swing again for another 2 checks afterwards, then we just poke with anything for lethal. You can do that with a hybrid, you can do that with a Pulsemon, there's many ways to do it um, and it's more consistent than you might think. So that's the top end of the deck guys, how do we do this, how do we climb up, what are our rookies looking like? We go up to the Pulsemons, the boy, the main man, Sonichu himself from the Vital Bracelet. The Pulsemon lines we have are very good, the cards are very powerful on their own, but in this deck they excel. So our main man here, got the Alt Art Pulsemon, on play, you can trash cards for the top of your deck until there are three left, you gain one memory for each you trash. Now, we don't use this effect all too often, we don't need to use it, sometimes it can be nice, but the main reason we run them is because when you're at three security cards, you gain jamming. So again, going back to our Kazuchi Mon play, we're swinging for four checks, we've got jamming. 
The only thing that can stop us is an option card and security. Pretty nuts. Now the other card that you're going to want to be using to go up the line with is this Pulse Mon here. Has an absolutely insane inherited effect. When attacking once per turn, if you hit three security cards, gain two memory. What the hell, man? That's crazy. And then we're also going to be running four of the baby, Bibimon, who is, uh, you know, he's Pulse One's canonical baby card. Some I've thought about using Yellow Whoopamon, but Bibimon, he, he's on theme and also helps extend your plays. So Bibimon's effect is uh, when you're at three security on attack, gain one memory. So you can see where this is going. You go into Kazuchimon, you swing for your two checks. Even if Kazuchimon dies, you gain three memory. So I've had it quite a lot where Kazuchimon will die to an option card in security. And uh, we've already gained our value. We've maybe checked one or two security, maybe three. Uh, Kazuchimon dies, but we've just gained three memory. Let's go to the damn moon. So <clears throat> it's pretty good, guys. You don't really want to use these other pulse mons for going up the line. This Pulse Mon is a blocker when you're at 3 or less, which is really nice as well. Um, and this Pulse Mon, you probably know, is infamous because it was a promo card that was very hard to get. It's very cheap now though. The whole deck is extremely cheap, apart from Death X Mon, but we don't talk about that. Uh, so this Pulse Mon has the effect, if you're at 3 or more security cards, draw 1. We use that to cycle quite a lot in the early game. And if you're at 3 or fewer, gain 2 memory. Now if you're at exactly 3, running theme with this deck, you will draw a card and gain a memory. So you're playing him for two, cycling a card. It's cracked. Absolutely insane. Now, one of the reasons that this is so good is because the new Pulse Mon support from BT10 is pretty nutty. We've got Impulse Memory Boost. So basically, as, as all memory boosts are, the turn after you play it, you can pop it to gain two memory. But it's an insane tempo card. It's absolutely nutty. Basically lets you play a Pulse Mon for free from hand. If we run it back to the Pulse Mons from earlier on, you can go for three, uh, play this Pulse Mon here, draw a card. Very, very nice. Or we can get a blocker out. Or we can get a Pulse Mon here that, um, you know, you go into a champion and all of a sudden he's a threat, you're gaining two memory on a swing. Or we can play our boy here for a super tempo play. Some of the stuff is crazy you can do, um, the value is nuts, but it's very risky this deck because you're putting yourself to 3 security and a lot of decks can just hammer through that like it's nothing. It's not too bad though, um, so you can play the Pulse Mon and gain memory back. If you're absolutely insane, you could gain, you could trash 2 security, gain 2 memory back and you've just played a memory boost card that's essentially cost you 2 memory and or 1 memory and played a card. Um, pretty nuts, all in all. So that's the Pulse Mon lineup, guys. These are the boys. Uh, they're going to sort you out in the early game. And uh, again, these two Pulse Mons you want to go up the line with. Moving on to the level 4 champions of the deck. Now, you're looking at these, you're thinking, where the hell is Bulk Mon? You know, Bulk Mon Pulse Mon's canon evolution. It's just, it's just not good enough for the deck, um, and it's not an enabler. The biggest thing you need to do in this in every OTK deck is draw to gain pieces. Uh, so what we've got here is a nice smorgasbord of uh, tools to help us do. So we've got Pedomon here, uh, the Pedo himself. He's a blocker, 5k blocker. And um, when attacking, lose two memory. We're not going to attack much. Um, but the most important thing is he's one to digivolve up. So you can go up the line into your promo boutmon for four memory, and that's not a lot for this deck at all. This deck is crazy the amount of memory it gains. Uh, so. You know, he's a blocker, 5k blocker is quite good in the current meta because there's a lot of rookies kicking about that are quite, you know, low DP. So he can actually put in some good work in the early game. Sometimes you want to raise your Pedomon and stall the game out. But Luchimon, you've probably never seen this card. It's nuts in this deck. If you're at three or fewer security cards on play, draw two. He's also just two to digivolve into and because there's not that many good level four inherited in yellow, we can just afford to run these these vanilla cards that don't see a lot of play. So you can use your whole combo with your, your Boutmon and your Pulse Mons. You gain a lot of memory. And then after the combo, what do you do? You drop a Baluchi Mon to draw two cards. 
Also, if you're in a game where you're struggling, your opponent's putting you down quite quickly, but you've got a lot of memory and just no pieces, we hard drop a Baluchi when we draw two cards, we're pogged out our damn gourd. Uh, Kazimon, everybody knows what it does. Nobody's running four in a deck though, what the hell Cobb, why are you running four Kazimon? Well, Kazimon is, like I say, there's not many good level fours for yellow. So Kazimon is just, we always want to see a hybrid so we can swing for game. Um, and like I say, it's just two to go into. It's all good. Zephyrmon is pretty pretty great as well. It's just another hybrid. But also, uh, you can evolve for one over a level four. Like I say, we want to be digging for our pieces quite a lot. Uh, just getting as much draw power as we can for the deck. Zephyrmon does that. Uh, you'll more than happily play one, pay one memory to cycle a card or choke your opponent. So that's the level fours, guys. Moving on, we've got the top end. We've explained it a bit already. Boutmon, promo Boutmon, absolutely insane because it makes Kazuchimon extremely cheap, enables the OTK, and it makes sure you can always set yourself to exactly three memory, three security. It's brilliant, guys. Trust me here. Kazuchimon, it's great. Um, it's an OTK deck, but also it's a control deck. We've got a lot of nice control pieces in the deck, uh, and if you're fighting in some matchups, I've recently fought a yellow hybrid player, for example, where they don't have a lot of a lot of OTK potential. They can't swing for four checks in one turn. It's a nightmare for them to deal with because you just keep evolving into Kazuchimon, bang, 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 recover three, um, they delete it or whatever. If, if they can't delete it, he's swinging for a lot. He's a threat. They have to answer immediately, and if they don't answer them, you're gonna kill them. Uh, if they do answer them, you've just recovered. Your security anyway, you're pogged. We can do it all again as well and next turn it's brilliant fun. Death X Mon, to me, it's kind of a mandatory card in the meta, unfortunately. The only card that's expensive in the whole deck as well. You could cut it and play the deck faster, more consistent, but we do just need it as a bit of removal. Um if our opponents are going wide, we need to be able to answer that. And uh, it helps get rid of memory blockers and stuff like that as well. So Death X Mon, it's a card that I begrudgingly run in the deck, you know, could see it going to one, putting in some more consistency pieces, perhaps another Zephyr Mon, um, or a Takumi Aiba, also another good card, but yeah, we have to play it. Impulse Memory Boost, absolutely insane. Now what I'm going to show you is going to blow your mind. Uh, Impulse Memory Boost, it's a tempo piece, but it's also something that lets us bank our memory for later. To be able to play, a, you're basically playing a rookie for three memory, and also giving the two memory back later. The only issue is you're, you're paying two cards to do that. But we've got a lot of card draw to the point where it doesn't really matter. Um, fantastic card. I love all the cards in this deck. They all, they all just mesh together so well. Like I said, guys, the secret sauce to this deck is card draw. How do we do that? Well, we're running freaking. 9 memory boosts total, we've got the reinforcing memory boost, 4 yellow memory boost and 4 impulse memory boost. So basically once you get one memory boost going, it's like a friggin train, the memory boost train leaves the station and it's going to the damn moon. You keep, you play a memory boost, you pop it next turn, you play a memory boost, you pop it, it keeps going. Once you've got one of these bad boys down it just keeps on giving. Reinforcing is a cracked card that's set to 1 for a reason. Um, delay gets you 3 memory, so you're basically playing it for 3 memory total. Recovers 1, um, by revealing 2 cards off the top of the deck, you pick 1, 1 goes to security. You can stack your security, you can take um, any card off this. Very helpful for digging and stalling the game. Lonky Addict Stacko. God knows if I'm mispronouncing this. I, I, I need to speak to, I've got a... a friend from Cyprus, he'll know how the hell to explain this pronunciation to me. Lonky Addict Stat Coat is a card that I, I'm basically only running it because of um, it's a removal piece. Right? I, I run it begrudgingly because you see it in hand sometimes and you're, you're not happy to see it. Almost every card in the deck you're happy to see when you draw it because it cycles or it's part of your combo. Longy is here because of the prevalence of Black War Greymon in the meta. Uh, if they build a giant Black War Greymon that's got Blocker and 13k DP, our Kazuchimon can't swing over it. So we need this Lonky to remove the, th the threat, basically. 
Anyway, sorry guys, an ice cream, but... Any chance? Lonky Addict stat, cool. So when you're at 3 or more security cards, you can minus 12k DP to a Digimon. It hits almost everything apart from gigantic things, your Death X Mon, some of your boss monsters. Um, but it, it's a pretty good removal there. But the secret sauce is if you're at 3 or fewer, it's like, um, oh, Chaos Degradation. It sends the card, uh, one of your opponent's Digimon, to the top of the security stack. Um, so, the other thing is if you're at 3 exactly, you get both effects. You can, you know, kill something, bounce something, it's fantastic for that. And we need it because we need to be able to bounce the bloody Black War Grey ones that people are running. The deck's everywhere at the minute. So that's our removal option. We've got 3 TK, TK Takashi. Uh, TK's great, we all know what he does, you know. Memory set art and we can check our whole stack to look for pieces. One other thing that uh, TK brings to the table is OTK decks. How often do you see it where they can't find their damn pieces? And it's because they're in security. They check the security and they've got the promo where Garurumon in there, they've got the Grandis in there. You know how it goes, OTK players, but TK, you know, goes around that. You get a look at the security, you can see how cracked your security is, and it's pretty cracked normally. Uh, and then you can take a piece, a pulse mon, whatever you like, um, and then you recover the card back so that you're not negging. So it's great. I'd run it at four. But if you see two of them, you don't really want to be playing two too often. So the other team we're running is TK and Carry. Um, it, it's really nice the gain two when you're at fewer security than your opponent effect. Very very useful. Um, a lot of the time we're going to be at less than them because we are um, going to poke them for one, leave them at four for most of the game, uh, and then we're going to be at you know if they are doing anything, we're going to be at less than four odds odds on. Also, the other part of it is it gets around Black War Greymon, because if you swing with a yellow Digimon, you can suspend it to give something minus 1000 DP. Now that's very useful, obviously, because then if we neg their Black War Greymon, or their Gaiomon, they have to decide, am I going to block this and clash? And then if they clash, guys, we've got the damn Pulsemon that gains us too many. So, and we've got the Bibimon as well, as our egg. So, you know what? We've gained three memory. We're gonna clash. You batter on, mate. You can you crack on, lose your entire stack to uh, a Kazuchimon swing when we've just gained our memory back, um, and we're well on our way to going back and doing it once again. So that's the deck, guys. Um, very very interesting. I I don't know what more there is to explain, honestly. But you may be wondering how the OTK works. So I'll explain it base basically. Um, Early game, you're going to use a Pulse Mon somehow. This is the, this is basically how it goes. Obviously, it's different every time. But you're going to play a Pulse Mon, or you're going to hopefully this guy, or you're going to play a Impulse Memory Boost. Even better to play one to develop uh, some memory for your next turn. Um, you're going to swing into security. It's going to die. Um, you've you've just left them at four security. At some point in the game, between all your memory boosts you've got, you will have enough memory to play a a Tamer, a TK or a TK and carry uh, and not lose too much tempo. So you drop one of them and you've you've got that left on the field. Then what you're likely to do is um, go into your combo, bang bang, swing for four checks, then you finish them with one of your five hybrids. Uh, the odds of us seeing all these are pretty high. You see your TK, your Tamer most games, the amount we dig into the, the deck, it's not infrequent to see 30 cards dug in by the, the third or fourth turn. Um, so you can, you can just swing off a hybrid or uh, it happens so often you've got an unsuspecting pulse mon sitting on the field and then you just swing for game. So that's the deck profile guys. I hope you liked it. Please try it. It's very competitive. I've probably got 50 plus games with this deck. I've been testing it on untap before BT10 even came out. I've went to two local tournaments with it and performed very well. I've, I've had a second place at locals with it. Um, only lost to a D Brigade. Uh, D Brigade's a hard matchup because it's so aggressive. Um, but the, the format seems to have slowed down a little bit. There's less OTK decks kicking around and there's less things in security to stop us these days. Uh, a lot of the time, the ceiling on what decks play, Crossheart and um, Blue Flare, other than Death X Mons, they're sitting about 10k max DP. So a lot of the time you don't even need the jamming. 
Um, it, it's very good, guys. It's very consistent. Better than you might think. I went 4-1 at a winner box yesterday with it. it. It's great. I don't know what to tell you. Give it a shot. Any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them happily. Because this is a, a brainchild of myself. Um, I've been surprised how good it is. I watched a card, I love Pulsemon, and I watched a card protagonist video um, with Pulsemon in it. And I thought, wow, that looks so fun. Really inspired me to make the deck. Um, and, and I think I've cracked it, guys. So, leave a like and sub. Hopefully we're going to be doing some, some more Digimon content soon. And uh, Pulsemon to the moon, baby. See you guys next time.